Can anyone be an entrepreneur? I used to think yes, and now I'm not so sure. I wasn't that good a student. I was uh, sort of middle of the road. When I was younger, I thought being an investment banker was the most exciting thing in the world. And then I got a job in the city and I realized it wasn't that interesting, even though you got to wear red braces and twang them. So I realized I wanted to set up my own business. And with my good buddy from university, Tom Boardman, we launched Firebox uh, back in the late 90s, just as the internet was getting going working on that during the day and then in the evenings I'd have to go and work in the pub and I was so tired, I was getting drink orders wrong, I was falling asleep at the till, uh, that, was, that was pretty brutal and I was fired because uh, I was pretty rubbish to be honest. I stepped aside from Firebox full time and set up Mind Candy and I thought what if you could mix games and the internet and not just a few people playing games together but hundreds, thousands, even, even millions. So the first game we created was Perplex City, a world of puzzles, mystery and intrigue. We were winning tons of awards for it. It was super groundbreaking. We were getting lots of press for it. People thought it was amazing. But as an entrepreneur, and I think this is what sets you know, the successful entrepreneurs apart from the rest, is that you have that sort of sixth sense of knowing whether there is something there or not. And I just couldn't see it being a venture scale return. And so very, very heavy heart. I just, I'd wake up at 4 a.m. every night in a cold sweat, just going, oh, I just can't see a way of cracking this. Maybe it's best to throw in the towel um, and restart with something new. She is a sort of cross between Tamagotchi and Facebook for kids. Just took off like a rocket and uh, we were adding one new sign up every single second. Over two million every month, tens and tens of millions of registered users all around the world. It's been phenomenal. We don't call ourselves a meditation or a mindfulness app. We teach this very ancient skill, meditation. Uh, we modernized it, we make it simple and accessible. And people are very, very willing to pay for something that improves their life. Build something people want, full stop. What advice would I give to people that want to start a business but haven't made that leap yet? I'd say stay in your full-time job, put a hustle on the side, something you work on at night and weekends, and then once you get to the point where you're, wow, there's something here, I can't stop thinking about this, that's the moment, I think, to, to, jump, to jump out of the airplane and try and build your parachute on the way down. So something I do very consciously that I never used to do at the start of every day is not pick up my phone. And not until I've left the house do I start looking at my phone because so many of us instinctively reach for it and suddenly our head is filled with tweets from Donald Trump and random WhatsApp group messages. And I think it's so important to daydream and think uh, and have a free head for those uh, first crucial few minutes. What advice would I give to a younger me? Uh, probably tell myself to just chill out a little bit, not overthink things, not overstress. Everything's gonna be all right in the end. <laughs> And if it's not, then it's not the end. And I think the entrepreneurial journey has been so valuable and rewarding. I've made some amazing friends. I've traveled all around the world. I've built brands that millions of people love. I've had some huge highs and crushing lows. I think you have to have your brain wired in a very weird way to be an entrepreneur. You have to be just on the edge of uh, crazy 